If you just got your Microsoft license and have been poking around Teams, or maybe you're using Teams for conference calls or video conferencing with coworkers, there's a lot more to it that you might be interested in learning about. Uh, Microsoft Teams has really come a long way in the last couple of years, and yet we still find that a lot of people are just using it for calls. So today we wanted to give you just a quick overview of some of the easier capabilities that you could access and really start to use Teams to enhance your workday. All right, let's take a quick look at what Teams looks like when we open it up, and then we're gonna dive into um, each of the buttons and kind of some of the high-level things that you'll see once you get into it. So when I first open Teams, I've got this interface. There's always a search button at the top, which is helpful when you start to have a lot of conversations or chats, just easily searching through those. You see yourself and your settings in the upper right-hand corner. And then on the left side is really where you have your app panel to, um, this is where you'll quick jump to all of your activity, your chats, your teams, your calendar, your calls, call history or make a new call. Um, you can also access your files or your to-dos. And then your teams is where you're gonna see all of the teams that you're a member of. So now that we've taken a, a look at a glance at what teams looks like, let's dive into some of the features a little bit more. One of the most used functions in Teams is chat. Chat is direct messaging between individuals. We like to think of chat um, similar to a text message where you're reaching out to one other person to have a quick conversation. Uh, chats can be used between multiple people, um, but if you are chatting with several groups, um, that's where we might start to think about putting that conversation into a team, which we'll get to next. So real quick, this is what the chat area looks like. Um, and again, it's direct conversations between individuals or groups in this area is also where you'll see chat conversations that occurred between meetings. This function on your left-hand panel is really just a way to keep all those conversations together, whether that chat happened uh, individual in a private setting or within a meeting. All right, next we'll actually talk about the teams within Microsoft Teams. So teams are accessed right here on your left-hand panel panel and this is really the heart of teams it can get a little bit confusing because we're talking about teams the application is called teams so what is a team within teams the application so teams the application houses the different teams that you create um, on the left side here, um, this lists your teams. So it's gonna show you the teams that you are a member of. And these, each team is essentially a collaborative space that has been created. Keeping conversations and files organized and housed within a team really keeps information flow transparent yet secure within groups of individuals. So teams can be set up by an administrator and that administrator when setting up a team will also choose privacy and security settings. Anyone who is added to the team is also going to have security permissions for all of the aspects of that team. Starting a new team within Teams really unlocks a lot, of, a lot of collaborative tools within the Microsoft space, such as an associated SharePoint site, OneNote, Planner Board, anything that you set up within the team once it's established, is going to inherit the permissions that your administrator originally set up. We talked about chat already, and now we're gonna talk about something similar, which is called channels. So channels live within teams, and any team that you create could have a number of channels underneath it. And the channels are what is gonna organize perhaps different topics within the greater topic, which is the team. So let's take a look real quick. Here's a list of channels underneath a team. This one's just called Ashley's Test Team. And each of these channels here, I have representing a different topic. Uh, and again, you can use channels in whichever way works best for your team. It's just gonna organize ideas. So if it could be a different topic, it could be a different project. Now to go one layer deeper, each channel has what's called tabs. So if you click into your channel, you'll see up top here, it comes with posts, files, and this plus sign, this is what we refer to as tabs. And this is just gonna be another layer of organization for the topic that your team is communicating and collaborating on. This plus sign here is what allows 
the real customization to your channel. So if you're using a specific uh, collaboration tool, maybe if you're working with a team and you're managing tasks in another tool, you can add any of those applications. Now, this is gonna let you add apps from the Microsoft suite, but also beyond. You know, you'll see more apps down here if your team's using Asana, Assembly. You can add those as a tab to your channel for quick accessibility for your team, and you can refer to things back and forth while your team's also, you know, maybe chatting or collaborating, creating posts on a topic. If you want to know more about organizing teams and channels, we just released a video all about project management in Microsoft Teams. So we'll link that up in the cards above or in the description box down below, and you can check that out to be walked through uh, really how to organize uh, team, channel, and tabs. So just to summarize channels again, each channel you're gonna have your posts. This is where your team can communicate about anything with regards to the channel. We have files, that's really, whenever you create a channel, you're also creating a document repository in SharePoint. So all of your files are held with the same security settings as your channel and your team can keep all of those organized here. And again, you can talk about them in the posts, you can talk about them in the notes, but they're all within the same spot. And then a wiki page is also created, and that's where you can house all of your notes. You can write notes for, from meetings that you have, anything, again, related to the channel as a whole. If you're using Teams, you're probably already using it for calls. So let's take a look real quick at what that looks like. This is probably one of the larger used functions. If I click calls in the box over here, this is gonna have the history of your phone calls, a quick dial or a quick speed dial to other members of your organization, or even guests who you usually call. And when you're in a phone call in Teams, that's gonna open up a whole uh, additional set of features. You can share your screen, you can invite others to join the call, you can have breakout rooms or take notes and even whiteboard together. Just different collaboration tools that are available once you are in the call. Teams is also frequently added as a location from Outlook. So this syncs very seamlessly with Outlook, which is where a lot of people are creating meetings and then just selecting Teams as their location. And that way the team space is linked to and created for anyone who's invited to that call. The other option that you have for calls is doing a meet now feature within channels. So once you're in a channel, if you just click this meet button up here, it's gonna allow you to do a on-demand impromptu meeting with anyone who is a member of that channel or you can click schedule a meeting and that way you're essentially scheduling a meeting for any time for the members of that channel. All right, now let's move over to the calendar. So a lot of people are used to the Outlook calendar. This is gonna be similar. It syncs to your Outlook calendar and functions very similarly. So here you'll have um, all of your meetings for the week. And again, if you already have meetings, mine's blank right now, but if you have stuff in your Outlook, that's going to show here. You can also just click a space to schedule a meeting and you'll have these options. This automatically makes it a Teams meeting. It's not that extra feature that you need to click when creating a meeting in Outlook. Um, and again, you can have a channel as your guests or you can just add uh, required attendees the same way that you're probably used to creating meetings. You can invite anyone as required attendees to your meeting, even if there's somebody who's not a current user of Teams or someone who doesn't have a Microsoft account, you can simply add their email address and invite them that way. Another great feature of Teams is the ability to customize all of your notifications. So to start to play with notifications, you just hit these three dots up here by your name and click settings. Now this is gonna open up a whole bunch of different options for you. Anything from how your interface appears to how you wanna be notified when there's different updates in your channels or maybe when somebody mentions your name or tags you. All that's customizable. So again, this is a great thing to play around with, edit each one individually and find the way that works best for you and how you wanna be notified. We do have a video on notifications in Teams, so we will link that up above and be sure to check it out if you're interested. Teams is available anywhere that you are. There is a desktop app, a web version, and a mobile app. So any time or place or way that you like to access your work, it's available through Teams.
All right, so that's a quick tour around Microsoft Teams. We hope you found that helpful and maybe found some new ways that you could dig into work that you're not currently using. For those of you that are still using Microsoft Teams just for calls or conferencing, there's a lot more there that you might wanna dig into that could really help enhance your workday. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and keep up to date with every time we post a new video. We also have an entire learning center on our website, which we will link in the description box. And that's where you can access a whole bunch of content organized by topic. So click around there and see if there's any more information that could be helpful to you. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.